Hi everyone, hope you're well and having a really good week so far. I always like to check your comments and emails to look at what videos and blog posts you guys want me to do. And one that always seems to come up is a video on my favorite makeup brushes. I think I did do one back in the day, but I haven't done one for a while. So today's video is gonna be all about my favorite brushes. And at the end, I'll talk about how to take care of them and look after them, because I think that's something we all kind of forget to do. Makeup brushes are my weakness. I think I actually prefer makeup brushes to makeup, which is crazy, but I am obsessed with makeup brushes. I have far too many. I need to sort them out soon, but I've managed to kind of pick out my favorites and there probably are quite a few. Some people can get away with having two brushes. Some people love to have 20. These are just my kind of essentials and the ones that I feel like I could really recommend to you guys because I love them. I think they're mainly high end, but a few kind of cheap ones thrown in there. One thing I would say is that I like to invest in my tools. I feel like makeup brushes are something that you can really invest in if you want to. So I have all my favorites here in this pot. This is a little marble kind of cup from H&M Home that I got a while ago. It's really nice to keep your brushes in. If you want to stop them from kind of falling around like that, just put some little stones at the bottom. You can get them from like a garden center. But there's lots of different ways to store your brushes. I'm gonna to have to find a new way, I think, when I move. If you guys have any good ideas, please let me know. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the Bobbi Brown Full Coverage Face Brush. Now, I used to always use the Real Techniques buffing brush and that comes in their core collection which is one thing I find slightly annoying about that brush is that you can't buy it by itself so if you want to repurchase it you have to buy the whole kit that's probably one of the main reasons I stopped using it the real techniques buffing brush is a great brush if you want to get started with the whole like buffing in foundation I would definitely recommend that one it's really affordable and it's great this one is slightly different but it has the same concept it's slightly round kind of buffing brush so you buff the foundation in like circular motions it's a newer way to apply our foundation rather than kind of painting it on which is something I never really enjoyed doing I love applying foundation with my hands but if you want to be a bit neater and tidier without the mess it's great to use a buffing brush this one is a lot softer than the real techniques one and I feel like it has a bit more movement as well the hair on the brush is slightly longer so you can really kind of blend it in and buff it in it gives such a smooth and flawless finish to your foundation you can apply it lightly sometimes I like to spray the brush with a setting spray or just like a moisturizing spray or you can really kind of layer up your foundation and get quite full coverage don't be fooled by the name you can definitely apply a light base with this brush by the way my brushes aren't clean I'm just I have such a crazy week this week this is like the only day I'm at home which is why I'm just like in a gray t-shirt so sorry that they're not clean but you know we're not all perfect. The next brush I'm gonna talk about is from Real Techniques and this is their setting brush. I haven't had to repurchase this yet. This is the same one I bought maybe two or three years ago. I'm not sure when it came out. I think this one comes by itself. Sorry if I'm wrong, but I don't think it comes in a set. And I think this one was made for setting powder under your eye, around your nose, but I actually use this for concealer and it's the best brush for concealer. It's really affordable and I just love the shape. It's slightly pointed at the top, so it's great for getting right into the inner corners of your eyes. And I use the flat side to kind of pat down under my eyes, around my nose, under my chin. I just use this all over for concealer. It's good if you're using like a liquidy concealer because then you can like buff it in. I'm not sure how well this would work with creams, but I don't see why it wouldn't. The Real Techniques brushes are synthetic, I think. Taclon bristles, something like that. But they're really, really soft, very easy to clean. And this is just, oh, this is definitely one of my favorite brushes. It's a great little brush. Okay, now let's talk about RMK brushes because these are kind of a new thing to me over the past year or so. I've always gone into Selfridges and just gone up to the Suku counter and stroked their brushes. They are so insanely soft. Lisa Eldridge always uses them in her videos and they look incredible when she uses them on her skin. But I didn't really want to invest that much in a brush. So RMK, I think they might be owned by the same company. They're very, very similar to Suku, if not the same, and they're kind of like half the price. They're still expensive for makeup brushes, but again, if you want to invest, I think this is a really good brand to look into. It's a Japanese brand, and I have four of their brushes. Actually, I think I have six because I've got doubles of some of these. The first one, which I'm absolutely obsessed with, is the Cheek Brush, and the other ones probably wouldn't be in my essential kit, but I wanted to show you just to compare to this one. Um, this would definitely be in my essential kit. It's the Cheek Brush, and I use this both for bronzer and blusher, you could definitely use this for highlighter and powder as well. So it's a really versatile brush. It's incredibly soft, like I can't even explain how soft this is. It's the perfect shape for bronzer just under your cheekbones or blusher just on the apples of your cheeks. It's great for setting powder, for highlighter. It just does everything and it's so soft and it's a pleasure to use. I feel like you should enjoy putting on your makeup and this makes applying your makeup very fun and very relaxing and enjoyable. These are really easy to wash as well. I was really worried that it wasn't gonna be as soft after washing it, but it 
dries perfectly, keeps its shape, and if you look after it well, this brush will last you a very long time. The other RMK brush that I probably couldn't be without, which is the newest one for me, is an eyeshadow brush. And this thing is great because all of their brushes have really short handles, so they're so good for traveling. They're just so miniature, as you can see. I don't personally like it when brush has a really long handle. It's quite useful if you're a makeup artist, so you don't have to like touch people's faces, but if you're just applying makeup on yourself, I think a little short handle like this is great. The hairs on the eyeshadow brush, the reason I really like it is because they're quite long. I like quite, quite a floppy eyeshadow brush, can I say that? That like moves around quite a lot. I really like to blend my eyeshadow out, so I don't like it to kind of pack it on too hard, I just like to really blend out and make it soft and make the edges really kind of soft and pretty. This brush, again, like all their brushes, is so soft. I have two of these, they are incredible. Great if you just wanna put a shadow all over the lid. Also great to work into the crease as well. If you want a more affordable version of the RMK eyeshadow brush, then I would recommend the Zoeva Luxe Crease. They do have another Luxe Define Crease, I think it's called. Um, which is a bit more like the MAC 217, but this one's slightly longer, like the RMK one, and as I said, I like my eyeshadow brushes to be a bit longer, a bit more flexible. This one is lovely for blending out. They're very similar. The RMK one is slightly softer. It's better quality and it will wash better, but woo, I've dropped it. The Zoeva brushes are great, and I have another Zoeva brush actually over here, which I will show you. This one is the Lux Petite Crease, and I use this one for under the eye. I love to apply eyeshadow under my eye. I pretty much do it every day. And this is just the perfect shape. I feel like some eyeshadow brushes are just too small and too firm that it applies too much shadow. It kind of hurts your eye as well, whereas this one's really soft. It has a lot of movement again, and you can really kind of soften out the edges and blend out the eyeshadow. This is the only brush that I would recommend for shadow under the eye. It does the job and it's perfect. One more eyeshadow brush to recommend. This is not an essential, and I feel like the RMK brush would also do this job, but I do love this brush. It's from Bobbi Brown and it's their eye blender. It's a lot bigger than any of the other eyeshadow brushes I have, and this one's great just for blending out the edges. It's so soft, it has so much movement, and if you really wanna get that soft edge, this one, is great, but as I said, a clean RMK brush will do the same job. I just have a couple of brushes to go now. This one is from Charlotte Tilbury and it's the Powder and Sculpt. And I wasn't sure how I felt about this brush at first because it's quite pricey and I was a bit disappointed that it wasn't that soft. It's kind of a bit scratchy, but actually that's really good for powder because it picks up the pigment really well. Sometimes if a brush is too soft, it actually doesn't pick up product that well. So this was great for a powder, contour, and highlight. It's a nice kind of tapered shape, so you can really get under your cheekbones if you're contouring, and you can kind of use the, the sides as well just to tap on highlighter at the top of your cheekbones. So this one can be used for a few different types of products. You could probably use it for blush as well, but I'd say that it's too, too defined for bronzer. Her brushes are really well made, and they've got this kind of edge on them so they don't roll off the table, and that's actually, I think, really handy. Roll, I say roll like I'm really, really posh. I don't know why I say that word. My friends always take the piss out of me. Roll, I need to learn how to say roll. This is a great brush. I was given a Bobbi Brown travel set at Christmas and I became absolutely obsessed with this brush. And now I take it everywhere with me. I travel with it, but I also use it at home. It seems to be the perfect shape for highlighter. I feel like a lot of highlighter brushes, like brushes that are sold to work with highlighters are quite small and dense. And I feel like with powder highlighter, it's nice to kind of really just like gently apply it on the tops of your cheekbones and you need a really soft brush for that. I don't like to kind of pack it on. This brush is so soft, it moves so well and it's got that kind of long tapered thing going on, it's just amazing. And then I looked on the side and it says sheer powder. So technically this is the same brush as the full size Bobbi Brown sheer powder but I feel like this one is way kind of puffier and not as long as this one. So I don't know if these are technically the same brush, they say they are. I prefer this one. Um, this is great for blusher, but for highlighter, I really, really like this one. They feel very different. I don't know what the difference is. I'll try and look into that. But if you can get your hands on the travel one that came in the kit at Christmas, then it's great. Okay, so final brush before I talk about taking care of them and how to wash them is this one from Kiko. Kiko is a really good, affordable brand. It's Italian. There's a shop in Oxford Circus, but I think you can also get it online and I've always used this brush. It's called the Lips 300. I thought it was called IPS, but I think the L's rubbed off. Lips 300, and it's a tiny little brush. It's great for throwing in your handbag, because it just looks like that, and then you pull it apart, and the little brush sticks out the end, and I always use this. I used it today to apply my kind of soft red lip. When I'm applying a red lip, I always like to apply it with a brush, so I layer it on, I really define the edge of my lips, and then I blot it with a tissue, reapply and kind of apply from the bullet and that just makes it last so much longer. So when I need to use a lip brush, 
which is usually only with a red or a dark berry. I always go for this one. I feel like once you use lipstick on a brush, it can really stain other products. So it's nice that once you're done, you can kind of take it off in a tissue and then just pop it back in and it closes. So you know it's not gonna make the inside of your handbag dirty or makeup bag. This was really affordable and it's like one of my favorite brushes. Okay, so quickly before I end this video, I'm gonna show you how I like to take care of my brushes. And I think if you're gonna spend money, if you're gonna spend 35 pounds on a brush, 45 pounds, whatever you wanna spend, then take care of it. And so many people I know don't wash their brushes. I never did before I really got into beauty. I didn't really think I knew it was even a thing, but it's so important. It's just like anything else, like washing your clothes. You're putting these brushes on your face. So if you wanna take care of your skin and you don't wanna kind of spread bacteria and get spotty, it's really important to wash your brushes. It seems like a chore, but if you kind of just make it a routine, say every other Sunday, I like to just sit on the side of my sink, watch YouTube videos and I do all my brushes in one go and it's quite nice. It's, it's nice to use a fresh, clean brush in the morning. So if I need to quickly clean a brush because I'm gonna go out tonight and do a smoky eye and my brushes aren't clean, then I'll just use the MAC brush cleanser and I just put this on a bit of kitchen towel and I just swirl my brush in it and it just takes off any eyeshadow that's there. But I wouldn't recommend doing this too often. It does kind of dry out your brushes. This is only when I'm desperate. Like just now before I filmed, I did a few on my eyeshadow brushes. So that's called spot cleaning. And what I do when I wanna deep clean my brushes is I use the Dr. Bronner Magic Soap. This one is so gross because I've nearly finished it. This is the baby mild one, but they come in all different scents. I just bought a rose one, I haven't tried it yet, but there's like rose, mint, almond. So if you want your brushes to have a scent, you can use one of those. This one is just plain and unscented. What I do is turn the tap on kind of warm, but not too warm, just kind of room temperature. And it's really important to not get any water in the, the funnel. I'm pretty sure it's called the funnel, which is this bit because then it will loosen the hairs and your brush will start to shed. So whenever you're washing your brush, keep it down so no water kind of trickles up into this part of the brush. Is it called a funnel? I feel like I'm being really stupid. I can't remember, it's probably not. So I just run it under the tap a bit, upside down, and then I put a tiny bit of this into the palm of my hand. You can use a glove, because if you don't want to make your hand all kind of soapy. And then I just swirl it in the middle of my hand and you'll see all the kind of color from the brush come out into your hand and then rinse it again and just kind of squeeze it out. Try to keep it in the same shape that the brush is in. Once you've got out all the product and all the soap and there's not like any soap left in the hairs, I just lay it kind of flat on a towel hanging off the table. It's better to kind of have it slightly tilted down so the water doesn't trickle in and make sure you reshape the brush while it's drying so that it's not kind of one-sided. All these brushes that I've recommended wash really well. Apart from the Bobbi Brown full coverage brush, I feel like it does go quite stiff and it takes quite a few days to dry, which is a bit frustrating, but all the others wash really well. And if you just try and get into some kind of routine doing that every other Sunday night, it'll be worth it because there's no point splashing out on a brush if you're not really gonna look after it. So I hope you guys have found this useful. So many of you on Twitter requested this video and I did tweet saying that I was either gonna make this video or a video about getting over my fear of flying. So let me know if you would be interested in a video like that. I feel like I could just sit and chat about it and maybe not everyone would relate to it, but some of you might. So let me know if you'd like to see that video too. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you guys on Sunday for my next video. Bye.